kick this off by introducing uh, Marcia Bollinger, uh, Dr. Marcia Bollinger, excuse me. She's the co-founder of the executive coaching firm Bollinger Leaflad and has spent over 25 years in executive recoaching, excuse me, re executive recruiting industry. Prior to that, she led positions in human resources. She's on a number of nonprofit boards and is the author of the award-winning 20-minute networking book. Hopefully everybody can see this. And everybody in the Philadelphia group actually gets this as a member when they join the group. Um, also winning the executive interview and making the jump, reinvent your career in nonprofit in the nonprofit sector. Um, as, a, as an executive recruiter, or excuse me, recruiter, she's seen the good and the bad of networking. She has created a model for networking that works for, that just plain out works. So today, Marsha is gonna share some of the most common mistakes that people make when networking and give you tips so that your networking always pays off. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Marsha Bollinger. Marsha? Great, thanks so much, David. Great to be with all of you today. I feel like we're kindred spirits. Uh, we're talking about networking. Um, and we are all involved in the work of people. And whether it is finding our next job, whether it is connecting to a board or a volunteer opportunity, whether it is civic engagement, whether it's seeking thought leadership about a project that I'm working on, uh, it's highly likely that networking is going to be a part of it. And uh, we're here today to talk about whether or how we might be able to do networking a little bit better, uh, a little bit differently. So I applaud you and I'm honored to join you. Uh, let's take a poll as we kick things off. Uh, and, and I'd like to find out how uh, frequently you all network and how many networking meetings perhaps you've had uh, in the last month. Um, let's see what we all think. What I think about networking my, myself with regard to finding opportunities, I'll use the word opportunity right now, uh, although I write mostly about using networking to find your next job. But like I mentioned, your next job might be a board seat or a civic engagement or a project. Okay, uh, it looks like Many of us are involved in networking at least a couple times a month, and, and many of us um, more than that. Terrific. So when I think about networking, here's what we know for sure. And I'm not a gambler, um, but hypothetically, if I was in Las Vegas and I had the million dollar prize, let's go for the big bucks, behind uh, door one, door two, or door three, here is what we know for sure that there is a five or 10% chance that the million dollar prize is behind door number one. There's a five or 10% chance that the prize is behind door number two. And there's a mid 85 to 90% chance that the door is, that the prize a million dollars remember is behind door number three. Uh, I'm no genius, but I would choose door number three. And I think we all would, right? Um, I've, I've, made it ridiculous, but what we know for sure is that over 80% of executive jobs are landed through networking, statistically speaking, year over year over year over year. Door number one uh, represents applying for jobs online. And a lot of us do that, uh, perhaps willy-nilly, perhaps a concerted effort, uh, perhaps we apply for reconnaissance or practice. Uh, but door number one is how many executives really truly land their next job or get their next opportunity uh, through random applications online. And I'm in the executive search field. Uh, David mentioned my firm, Ballinger Leaf Glad. We uh, have been in business for many years, working uh, at this moment exclusively placing heads of nonprofits. Uh, before that, I worked in corporate search. But be that as it may, my industry, as, as interesting as I think it is, um, only represents a very small percentage in real terms of how executives land their, their next opportunity. Uh, so door number three is where it's at. Statistically speaking, you know, you go back and buy uh, what color is your parachute, the very first one from the 70s. You know, then it's on its 45th edition. David's laughing. You probably have a few of those editions around the office. Uh, but, you know, even back, back in the very first edition, uh, 
the, the statistics were around 70 some percent of all jobs being landed through networking. So, so let's talk about that and the first mistake, I promised I would talk about several mistakes of networking today. Uh, the first mistake is not valuing networking. People will call me to network and spend their time asking me how they're, uh, they can do better on applications. Or they will call me to network and say, uh, you know, how many times should I call your executive search firm to continue to tell you that I'm still looking? And, and I try to engage us, let's talk about networking and we keep swinging back to door numbers one and two. The first mistake we make is not valuing networking. If I'm in transition, and I'm playing the odds, and again, I'm no genius and I'm no gambler either, but I would spend 80% of my time and energy networking. If I'm not, look in the mirror and ask yourself why. And, and David and the entire team uh, can help you think about that. So why do I care about networking? Well, I care about networking because as an executive search practitioner, uh, networking is part of my job. Uh, we are also in the executive search field frequently asked to network uh, by potential candidates. And I'm someone that many years ago started saying yes. I, I started saying yes when my industry was still mostly saying no. And so, you know, call Marcia Ballinger, she'll take a meeting with you. And I realized at a certain point that I had reached over a thousand meetings. And what I knew was what worked, you know, what, People did that when they left my office, I was really excited to uh, forward their information or keep them uh, in my active thoughts about uh, our opportunity and what people did that made me um, put their resume or bio um, in the circular file, so to speak. Uh, and, and once I realized, you know, after a thousand of these and probably now I'm at 2000, I, I should have something to say about this. I started watching and sketching what the people did that were terrific networkers that made people like me excited uh, about them. And then I tested my ideas with other CEOs, partners at law firms and partners at accounting firms, people that get a lot of requests for networking meetings. And I sort of tested out uh, whether this would work. So, you know, David mentioned there's a model and it, it uh, can come across as, as uh, rather scientific in that regard, but I did do a, a fair bit of, of testing to see to see if it works. Uh, because it is critical that we have comfort uh, coming in to networking. Uh, let's do the second poll and, and see how we feel about networking uh, as a collective right now. Because some way, shape, or form, at some moment, we are going to jump into it, or re-jump into it, or re-enter networking, or add to my networking, or do some new networking. And with that comes some feelings, uh, impressions. Uh, very few of us love it. That's OK. Uh, some of us tolerate uh, dread, and some of us have some mixed feelings. Uh, you know, we're there, and, and I get that. The, the second networking mistake that I'd like to talk about is uh, feelings aside, uh, we will feel better when we have a model that's in our hip pocket that we know works. Uh, but the second mistake that I'd like to talk about is what I call bungling the meeting request. Nowadays, uh, we're gonna probably request networking meetings via an email, right? In, in, you know, those of us that were uh, actively working uh, pre-internet picked up the phone and uh, made networking requests that way. But today we're going to um, uh, send an email request. And here's a couple of things that I, I will say about that. Uh, have a subject line that includes the connection. If David Panette was the person that suggested that I contact, mention David's name in the subject line. Uh, networking via David Panette or uh, HR executive connection through David or something like that uh, in my subject line. Networking connection, meeting request, uh, opportunity to uh, meet, 
whatever it might be, uh, and, and the, the connection. The second thing is we're gonna probably send an email. And the first thing I'm gonna do is reiterate that connection. I'm Marcia Ballinger, SPHR. I was referred to you by, by David Panette. Now, David almost certainly has told me something about you. And it is, David sure enjoyed working with you last year. He said that you were outstanding. Uh, David shared that the two of you were peers years ago and that you worked together in a department that was called the Dream Team. David shared that you were the best boss he ever worked for. So David probably shared some content, share it with the other person. Deepen David's connection with this other person. Okay, number one. Uh, I'm in transition, seeking an HR director opportunity right now. I've attached my resume. Uh, I'd love to connect briefly for a few minutes. And, and here's the important thing, at a time and place of your convenience. I, it's, it's Thursday, probably yet this week, I'm gonna get a networking request from someone who wants to meet me, uh, I kid you not, yet this week. Don't do that. Give the person several weeks to say yes to the meeting. It feels urgent to be in transition. It feels urgent to be seeking a consulting gig or a board spot. It's not urgent to the other person uh, that we are talking to. So uh, I'd love to meet briefly at the time of uh, your convenience and at the place of your convenience. I will come to your office I will bring a latte of your choice, uh, or I will be happy to meet with you via Zoom or uh, via telephone. We have to make it as easy as possible for the person. If I get a networking um, request and it is, you know, within seeking to talk to me within a few days, I will never take that meeting. In a mil I will not take that meeting. So uh, I made the connection, I've stated I'm in transition, attached is my resume. David suggested that you'd be a great contact for a few minutes. I'd love to meet with you uh, anytime over the next few or several weeks uh, at your office or, or via Zoom. Um, and, you know, stating very clearly it's a short meeting. Uh, and again, uh, please let me know what might work for you. I look forward to the, to the connection. If you would like an A plus in uh, your meeting request, you've gone to their LinkedIn and you have uh, learned a little more about them perhaps. Uh, I see that you're on the board of the local boys and girls club. That's an organization I participated in as a youth. You know, thanks for your community service. I see that you're involved in uh, girls soccer coaching. I too am a soccer coach uh, at the junior high level. So maybe in, even in addition to David, you uh, can make it even a deeper connection. Uh, when people do that, um, you will up your chances of getting a yes out of, that, out of that meeting significantly. Using David's name is a baseline. Saying something that David shared that adds richness to that relationship uh, increases your odds. Going to their LinkedIn, finding yet another connection increases the odds. The purpose of the meeting, the shortness of the meeting, the ease of the meeting, all increase your odds. We're never going to be 100%. Somebody, you know, maybe I call someone and they're leaving uh, to be uh, gone for the winter. Maybe I contact someone and they're retiring in three weeks. I'm not going to get 100%. That's okay. We're all, we're still in Las Vegas and we're playing the odds. So I'm going to be more highly likely to, um, to get a meeting when I uh, make a deeper connection and make it easy for the person to say yes. The higher up the, the higher up the person in the org chart, the more you should feel free to be personal. I see you're involved in coaching. Um, I once had a, a I, I was asking for a networking meeting from, uh, an executive at General Mills, one of the top executives at a huge Fortune 500 company. And I thought, oh crap, they're not going to say yes to little old me. And the, I noted that the person went to Drake University. And so I made a comment, you know, my, gee, my daughter attends Drake University. Go Bulldogs. 
And I kid you not, the guy was back to me within an hour. So don't hesitate to use that other uh, connection or information that you might find about the person. So, so let's just say, uh, yes, you know, the person gets back to us, we schedule a meeting. Uh, when you schedule the meeting uh, and confirm it, if it's a Zoom meeting, you're in charge of setting up the meeting. Uh, you've asked for a short amount of time, so don't set up an hour long meeting. Confirm the meeting for 30 minutes. So let's just say we've got our 30 minutes set. You might not need all of it. Uh, now what? Now what is thinking about my three objectives for, for the meeting uh, and, and going in square with what I hope to accomplish? Number one, what do I wanna learn from this person? And that means stepping outside of myself and forgetting about, I've gotta get a job. Does this person have a job for me? Where are the jobs? Stepping outside of that and thinking, what do I uniquely want to learn from this person? I've looked at their background. I've looked at their bio. David recommended them for a reason. What do I want? Oh, I'm on a wisdom seeking tour. What couple of questions might I want to learn from their unique background at this time? So thinking about that ahead of time. Um, I might want to, uh, connect with their network in some way. Maybe they're part of an alumni association or another uh, trade group or whatever the case might be. Others in their company, uh, thinking ahead of time about uh, who I might connect with uh, through them or what other networks they might belong to. And thinking about myself in such a way that after that meeting, um, we've built a relationship that I could consider them an ambassador. So those are my three objectives for the meeting. And, you know, back when I was doing my uh, research, such as it was, about uh, what makes these networking meetings successful, is I reflected on how much time does it take to do those things? You know, how much time does it take to ask somebody like Marnie a couple of questions to gain her wisdom from her unique experience? Uh, how much time does it take to reflect with her a little bit about others in her network and to do that in a positive way? Well, I thought, all right, if I were in a, any other situation, uh, setting up a meeting to learn a few things, gain a couple connections and do it in a positive way, I wouldn't need more than 20 minutes. And indeed, we don't. And granted, 20 minutes is a provocative number. I know that. Uh, but I, I do uh, challenge and encourage us to uh, think about trying to accomplish this as close to 20 minutes as possible. So the third mistake of networking is taking too much time. The standard hour long networking meeting no longer has a place. Don't set up hour long meetings. Don't agree to hour long meetings. When people ask me for networking meetings, I say, great, I'll talk to you between two and 2.30. I'm pretty explicit about that. Uh, setting up my guardrails. Uh, and what I do when I set up a 30 minute meeting and I execute within that time frame is I can say to that person all I want. I'm results oriented, I'm planful, I'm organized, I'm this, I'm that. It means nothing if I don't show up in that way. But when I show up and I manage to expectations, I've sent a message. That leads me to the fourth mistake in networking, and that is not being a pro in running the meeting. Here's the truth. We all know this intuitively in business. Whoever calls the meeting runs the meeting. You know, hello, we all know that, right? Except when we're networking. Let me tell you that many people forget. Uh, people come to my office, flop down, and top executives show up, plop down, and wait for me to run the meeting. Or plop down and say, you know, uh, why, why did we schedule this? You're not gonna do that. You are going to be a pro in running a meeting. It, it, you know, you're in their office, you might be in their space, you might be meeting on their side of town, uh, if in person. Uh, if it's a Zoom meeting, if it's a Teams meeting, if it's a Skype meeting, you've set that up, right? That's, that's a responsibility of asking for a meeting. 
but you've called the meeting and you run the meeting. So grab it, you own it. Um, we, we talk a little bit about uh, having a structure to the meeting and a structure doesn't mean that we are going to be rigid. It doesn't mean that we're going to be overly crisp or uninviting. Having a structure frees us up so that we know what's happening. We know what's gonna happen next. It's sort of back of the mind. Um, and to me, it is a uh, security blanket. I know how this is gonna go. I've got it. I've got my structure. I've got my plan. I'm gonna run the meeting. Uh, and the meeting will almost always unfold uh, according to how I've got it organized. The first thing I'm gonna do in my 20 minutes is I'm gonna make sure that I start off on the right foot with, a, with my impression. Um, when I meet someone or talk to someone and I was referred to them, uh, let's just say by Larry, uh, I'm, even though I sent an email and asked for the meeting on Larry's uh, say so, I'm always going to start my meeting by reminding the person about the connection to Larry. Two, three weeks have passed, they're busy, they've had countless other things happening in between time. I can't be counted on to remember that that was the connection. So always start by saying, thank you again so much for meeting with me. Larry says, hi, I talked to him uh, last week. Um, he sends his best. Um, did you see that article that Larry had out on LinkedIn? Wow, you know, great to see that. What a terrific guy. I know he enjoyed working with you as well. So I'm always going to reiterate that connection. I'm gonna remind them that the meeting will be short. Thanks again for taking a few minutes today. Thanks again for taking 20 minutes today. Um, and I'm gonna get started. Um, the, the next mistake that I'm going to make uh, or that I sometimes make, we won't make that, um, is when I have uh, a description about my background. If you've read the 20 minute networking meeting, you know how much time I suggest to talk about myself. One minute. And the only reason that I have one minute out of 20 is I round it up. Because when I did practice narratives, you know, I, I wrote out several narratives of what I might say in a networking meeting. Uh, and I, I read them and timed them. They were almost always 20 or 30 seconds, but, but uh, I generously rounded up to a minute. So what, what does that mean? Uh, number one, I need to know my narrative so that I can uh, own it and describe it in a minute or less. Number two, super great news if you don't love to talk about yourself. If you think one of the reasons that networking, meeting, uh, networking meetings can be a drag is I hate talking about myself. I hate showing up. I feel like I'm bragging. I'm an introvert. Uh, this is really uncomfortable to start talking about myself and my background. Ugh. Great, don't do it. an overview. And here's why. Uh, number one, I sent my resume or my bio uh, ahead of time. Number two, I probably sent a confirmation email the day before. Always wise. Talk to you tomorrow at three o'clock p.m. Attached is the Zoom link uh, as well as uh, my resume or my bio or my one pager. So I've sent it twice, right? Um, and they probably have it in front of them. So reiterating and reading my resume is never a great use of time, especially on a wisdom seeking tour. That's sort of the anti-wisdom seeking tour is reading and talking about myself. And for the purposes of networking, learning from them, connecting to their network, talking about myself doesn't really have a, a terrific place. So one minute about myself, and, and the minute about myself is really a context set. So if I were networking for a board opportunity, let's just say, I might share, I've been in the executive search field. You know, again, thanks so much. You know, I, my, uh, set, I sent my board bio ahead of time. You can see that I've been in the executive search field for about 25 years. Uh, 
founded two companies, and prior to that had a background in human resources. I think that's probably what I would bring to a board uh, is the HR side of the equation. And some of the boards that I've served on are, are noted uh, large nonprofits and some small human resources related businesses. What I'm really thinking right now is how I might uh, capture that experience and perhaps uh, translate that into some other types of organizations. And I'm really looking forward to getting your thoughts about what that might be. That was probably about 15 seconds, maybe 15, 20 seconds. That's really all the person needs, right? For uh, networking for that purpose. Um, because my job is then to talk with them about their background because the lion's share of any networking meeting is going to be me asking them meaningful questions about their background. Remember, a uh, networking meeting in a lot of ways is a wisdom seeking tour. And, and what I say to people, um, if you're seeking a job, the one thing you never wanna ask in a networking meeting is do you have a job for me? Because that is guaranteed to make the other person squeamish and uncomfortable. If I go around asking people, do you have a job for me? Where's a job? Can you get me a job? I will not find a job. If I network by seeking wisdom, by seeking wisdom, I'll find a job. Because I leave the person in such a way that they feel positive about me, they will recommend me, they will forward my materials. If I leave someone feeling squeamish and uncomfortable, they're not terribly likely to share me with their network. So we're not gonna ask for a job. Our discussion, and remember we run it, uh, we asked where we run it, is to come prepared to talk to the other person about their background. And, you know, we, we allow around 15 minutes for a discussion. That's going to require me to do some homework. And um, mistake number six, mistake number five is not knowing my personal narrative well enough to uh, give it in a, a tight fashion. But mistake number six is not doing my homework about the other person. I once had a networking meeting and, you know, hey, we're all busy. Uh, I met a gentleman at a restaurant and he must have been really busy uh, prior to the networking meeting, but he came flying into the meeting and, you know, he had, he had printed off my LinkedIn and he comes to the table and he sets it down and you know, I'll be darned. He was looking at my LinkedIn and asking questions in the moment. And I thought, well, you know, better perhaps to have looked at my LinkedIn and my website and things like that ahead of time and come prepared with questions. But this is certainly better than defaulting to generic questions. Oh. And I'll tell you the questions that are absolutely not allowed. Well, Marsha? Yes, go right ahead. We actually have a question from Danielle Dorner. So Danielle, you'll be unmuted and please ask your question. Danielle. Hi, I'm sorry. I thought I just typed it in. Um, how are you? Uh, I was curious about in that email introduction, could we include that LinkedIn profile instead of a resume? So it doesn't seem as uh, job searchy requesting, you know, um, you mentioned your bio or resume. Uh, I was curious what you think of in saying, here's my LinkedIn Profile, so you can see a little bit about me versus a resume, which might seem a little bit like we're asking for a job in some way. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and, and if your LinkedIn is built out and if your LinkedIn is rich uh, and it's something that you would, would want to share as, uh, as, as an easy alternative, a one click, uh, I think that's a great idea, Daniel. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, so LinkedIn for the other person is, is great homework um, in order to plan out what I might want to talk with that individual about, uh, or their organization's uh, website or other information that you might find out about them. Uh, the questions that I never want to ask are, and I'll tell you what the most common question is that people ask me by far, by far the most common question. What do you do here at Balance Your Leaf Lad? That's by far the most common question. I see David laughing. Uh, 
And I'll tell you what, uh, I have a colleague uh, who runs another company and she, when she gets that question, what do you do uh, here at Anderson and Associates? She says to the networker, uh, did you go to my website? And sheepishly, the networker typically says, no, I didn't. And what she asks them is, why not? Now, I would not want to be in that chair at that moment. That's a painful question, but it's pointed and it's appropriate, right? If I'm requesting time, uh, the precious resource of time from someone, uh, I owe that situation the benefit of, of my homework. So I do my homework. I look up that individual and I ask myself, what do I sincerely want to know from them at this moment? Say, well, uh, John, you have been in consulting and uh, you've also worked in higher education. Uh, and now you've returned to consulting. I'm interested in hearing about that transition uh, as I too am considering now moving from a higher ed position into consulting. Wouldn't that be helpful? Uh, I'm thinking about sitting for the CEBS certification right now. And I see that that's something that you earned a few years ago. Do you think that's a beneficial uh, activity for me right now as I think about a director uh, position in the field? So I'm seeking their wisdom. Sometimes wisdom seeking is pointed like that, asking about a specific uh, role or, or, or certification or credential. Sometimes at the very beginning of my networking journey and my, my job search journey, let's just say, uh, my questions are, I don't know what I don't know. And sometimes my questions are, I've got this background, I've got 20 years of org development experience. I've been primarily in very large international entities. Um, I've, my heart is telling me to go small, but I'd love to get your take on that. You know, you and I have worked together. Where could you see me plugging in? So depend, dep if you're really early in your networking journey and you've got a lot of questions, uh, sometimes asking for someone's you know, wisdom might be in the form of their opinion or their assessment or their ideas, or could you brainstorm with me a little bit about here are some organizations that I'm sort of thinking might benefit from uh, my type of leadership development background, but I'd love to noodle with you about others. So those questions are also fair game as well. But I think the most important thing is uh, I've done my homework so that I know uh, on the other end, uh, what that person brings, what I might seek, and how I might go about asking for, uh, for that wisdom. There, there's a couple of other questions that I have to be prepared for. Uh, quest, the fourth question, you know, I bring, bring three questions in for the other person in the wisdom seeking category. Question number four is uh, additive to my network. And the baseline question is, um, who else do you know that I might connect with as part of my networking? If you can't think of anything else, go ahead and ask it that way. Who else do you know that I might talk with uh, as a part of my networking? If you can be more specific, it's usually better. Uh, Linda, I see that you're part of the uh, University of Michigan Alumni Association. Anyone in that alumni association that you think I might want to uh, also connect with? I see that you are part of uh, FEI, uh, Larry, here in the region. Uh, anyone else from FEI that you think I should touch base with? Counterintuitively, uh, priming the pump usually gets more suggestions. Sometimes people, call me and they say, Marsha, who do you, can you think of anyone? Well, I've got 17,000 LinkedIn's, you know, maybe. Uh, but when someone says, I'm looking for a position in um, uh, employment law in the East Metro, I am much more likely to come up with, with some specific names. So prime the pump if you can. 
with some ideas. The uh, seventh networking mistake that, that uh, I, I think we're probably in tune to, but it's worth mentioning, um, is not giving back. And you think, well, why should I give back? Networking is about helping me. Uh, no, it's not. Networking is a quid pro quo. And, and I assure you that you are all competent executives who live in the world of quid pro quo every single day in business. And I think that one of the main reasons that many of us feel uncomfortable networking is because we have this assumption that I'm going to go crawling and crying and begging. And it doesn't feel that natural exchange of, of organizational life that we're all so used to, right? So it's really important to regain that sense of equivalency, equality, partnership, as much as I can, right? So question number five in the networking discussion always needs to be, how can I help you in return? We must ask that. And if you can't think of anything better, ask it that way. How could I help you in return? If you can be more specific and say, uh, I am also a member of the OD network here in the region. And I'm wondering if that the uh, membership there would be a good speaking engagement for you. Uh, I see that you are on the board of a Children's Home Society and you've got a gala coming up. Is that something I could promote for you on my LinkedIn? Uh, people have brought me up-to-date articles in the field. I thought you might like this. Uh, I got access to a second copy of this book. It's fairly hot off the press. Uh, thought you might enjoy reading it. Um, if people go online and they see that I have dogs, people have brought me little bags of dog treats. And, and that's a little bit more personal, but I think, and, and it's wonderful and it's wonderful and so appreciated and very gracious. And I think it helps the networker feel like I'm not just a taker, be a giver. The other thing that I can do to uh, be a giver is to enhance, um, enhance the relationship between the uh, person I'm meeting and their own network. Can I take a selfie with David before I leave his office and post on LinkedIn? Had a great meeting today with David. Uh, what, a, what a source of wisdom about the community and how I might uh, approach my job transition. Thanks, David. My business partner, uh, Lars Leaflad, was voted the best connected man in Minnesota when he was 35. Uh, he is an extreme introvert. It would kill him to go to a gala. Um, but he, he networks one-on-one -on -one and every single one-on-one -on -one meeting that he has, he takes a selfie and posts a thank you and recognizes something awesome about that person. Our, our office is, you know, it's a who's who of people trying to get in the door to get their selfie with Lars. Uh, it's meaningful to recognize what could I do to show gratitude to this person? Ideas for them, uh, connections for them, um, a, a small token, a recognition. But some way, shape, or form, think about that because it is it is it is a mistake to walk away from a networking meeting not having. Uh, built a partnership with that other individual. There's nothing I can say about myself about being a team player and a, I'm, I'm a, a really great communicator and I'm a relationship builder and walk away and not even say thank you. And I can tell you that more than half of the networkers that I've met over the years left without saying thank you. And then I get it. You know, if I'm out of work a long time or if I'm frustrated or nervous, I, I can get self-focused, but we don't want to do that. We've got this structure that says, I'm going to ask about you. I'm going to seek your wisdom. I'm going to, yes, ask about my own network, but I'm going to focus also uh, my final question on how I can help you and, and partner with you. 
Uh, the eighth networking mistake is uh, what I'm going to call not using uh, networking follow up to your advantage. Networking is about that meeting. Yes, it is. It's also about building your cohort of contacts. When people land in new roles or when they get that next board seat or that next big consulting gig or interim assignment or whatever it is, and they've used networking to get there, the one thing overwhelmingly that people say is, uh, yeah, I had a lot of meetings. Yeah, there was some time, maybe a little pain, but I will never let my network drift again. And um, how can we do that? We can use networking follow-up to our advantage. You know, in the book, I write about um, responding back with, with uh, a thank you within 48 hours. That came more from other people that uh, I surveyed that felt they needed to hear back within a couple of days. So, so do that. You know, an email thank you is just fine. Uh, and, and reflect something back that you specifically heard. Larry, thank you so much for telling me your story and sharing uh, in a vulnerable way about you know, how you worked through the challenges of transition. Linda, thank you so much for sharing the names of uh, other women in your uh, Women Business Owners Roundtable. Marnie, thank you so much for sharing the, your top three skills that you think are important for a um, uh, HR executive in a production facility. So grab something specific, saying thank you for your time. If you're really busy and you got nothing else, do that. But if you can, uh, up your game and be specific. It says, I heard you. It says, I uh, listened. It says, I'm taking away your wisdom. So uh, I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to be prepared. I'm going to honor time, all, all of those things. And here's what I'm going to do to be in the top 5% of all networkers. I'm going to circle back. So going back to our original example, uh, David gave me the connection. David gave me the connection to Marnie and said, call Marnie. She and I used to work together. Uh, she's absolutely outstanding. She's a phenomenal sense of humor. Uh, so I approach Marnie by email, connect, connection through David. You know, Marnie, thank you so much uh, for considering. I'm in a job transition. David suggested that I connect with you. He said that you had a, a really tremendous sense of humor and one, were one of his most treasured colleagues. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. When Marnie gets back to me and says, yes, I'll meet with you. And we set up our time in three weeks. The first thing I do is let David know. Hey, David, thanks so much again for the connection to Marnie. Uh, we're meeting in three weeks. I'll let you know how it goes. You know what? David has given me something precious. Our, he has entrusted me to one of his contacts. So I owe it to him to say, here's where it's at. Uh, maybe David responds and says, oh, you're going to love talking to Marnie. Uh, she was absolutely the best uh, at public speaking that I've ever seen. Okay, new information. So now I meet with Marnie. Thanks again. Remember, I was connected through David. I, he sends his greetings. He, uh, boy, he shared with me that you had some powerful uh, public speaking. Uh, during the times that the two of you work together. So I'm always upping their relationship. I'm, I can be otherish uh, in this relationship. And, and when, it, when I think about follow up, I follow up with Marnie, but I immediately follow up with David. I immediately follow up with David and thank him for the connection, let him know that Marnie and I met. Undoubtedly, Marnie has said something about David. Oh my gosh. David was such a great detail-oriented guy. We uh, gave him a set of green eye shades uh, when he left the organization. We all gave him our materials to proofread and double check because he was so great with the details. I'm gonna share that back to David. Marnie was so gracious. Uh, she shared with you how, um, Impressed she has been over the years with your expertise and uh, your partnership. And in particular, you were the uh, proofreader in chief uh, for the entire division. So I'm going to uphold their relationship. Many networkers, most networks forget to do that. The trail goes cold. 
a lot of people say to me, you know, what's a good time or reason to call people back? Uh, well, there's not a great time to call someone back and say, I'm still looking. What are you going to do for me now? But there is a great reason to call someone back if I run into Marnie and uh, she says something that makes me think I can get back in touch with David, or I see a posting where the two of them are mentioned or something like that. I am upholding other people. That's a fantastic reason to get back in touch. And, and I think the last networking mistake um, is not making networking a way of life. Once I get into the mindset that networking is about partnerships, it's about relationships, it's about learning, it's about wisdom, um, that becomes a way of life. And that feels and is a more comfortable and productive place to be, whether I'm looking for a new job, board seat, consulting gig, or any other next sort of opportunity, uh, making networking a way of life is a, a critical, critical part of that. Good I'd be question. happy to turn it over to uh, David for any questions right oh, now. Ashley Marshall, one just came in from Marianne Warner. So Marianne, please go ahead and ask your question. Oh, got to take you off. Oh, Linda, if we can take Marianne off mute. Let's see if I can do it. I uh, I asked her to unmute. So Marianne, if you're there, please go ahead and unmute and ask your question. There, you go. there we go. Thank you so much um, for hosting this teleconference today and Zoom meeting. I have been out of the workforce for a little bit and I've decided to get back into it. I have a great set of networking people, but I just kind of have let it go stale a little bit. How do you restart that networking connections up? Yeah. Uh, well, good for you. I, we're, we're starting with the idea that I've got a network, uh, and we all do, right? Even reluctant people who say, gee, I, haven't, I don't know anyone. I've been working so hard these last 20 years. I, I don't know a soul. Well, yes, you do. You know uh, people you used to work with. You know people in your neighborhood, you know people uh, in community, you know people in perhaps a faith community or volunteerism or a professional organization. And if I don't, or even if I do, uh, start attending, you know, I better get myself to the local chamber or there's a women's organization. Or if I'm really uh, wanting to dip my toe in it, start joining some LinkedIn uh, seminars and at least meet people on LinkedIn and link with them and you know start uh, via chats. So work my way to um, understanding who is in my network. So right away, uh, Marianne, that's a great comment. You've got a network. I don't like to uh, obfuscate or pretend that 10 years haven't gone by since I've talked to that person. I think putting it on the table, uh, boy, Jim, it's, it's I'm great to see that you've been so successful in your uh, career in leadership. I've been following your career over the last several years. Congratulations on your recent promotion. You can see all that on LinkedIn. Uh, and you've recently won an award. I'm wondering if we could touch base to reconnect. Uh, right now I'm reconnecting with my network. Uh, you're someone I always thought highly of for your leadership style. Uh, wondering if we could grab a couple of minutes. So I appreciate that, Marianne. I don't uh, sweep under the rug that it's been a few years. I put it out there. Uh, we all have busy lives and I don't find that to be as big a barrier uh, if we do the other uh, parts of acknowledging the connection correctly. Okay, great advice. Any other questions for Marsha? Okay. So, Marcia, again, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, your structure, I thought I knew about networking. I've got a, two pages of notes here. Uh, again, everyone, please, if you haven't got it already, right here, go online, get Marcia's book. It's all in here. It's great stuff. Um, if you have other questions that you'd like to ask offline, please feel free to uh, look at Marcia's LinkedIn. We'll get it out to everyone. Um, Messenger via LinkedIn and Marsha will be more than happy to respond and help you help you that way. Um, so again, at this point, Marsha, thank you so much. Again, appreciate everybody's attendance. 
and we look forward to seeing everybody in more important webinars in the near future. Again, thank you so much, Marsha. Appreciate your time. Have a great day.